Welcome to La Taverna Friuli Wines, the definitive podcast on wines from Friuli Venezia Giulia. I'm your host, Wayne Young. Okay, here we are with my friend Mattia Bianchini from uh, Yole Grillo. Grillo Yole. Actually. Grillo Yole. <laughs> sorry, I get it backwards. Sorry, sorry. Thanks for spending some time with us. Appreciate it. Uh, before we get started uh, talking about wine, I just wanted to say one thing. You're you're too tall. I know. You're I know. Too, you're a lot too of freaking tall, that. man. You make me feel like a like a little person. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but anyway, no, we we've known each other for a while. Yeah. Yeah. And and. I've known the the Hacienda for like 20 years. Wow. Because the first time I went there, I met who I believe is your dad. I, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I've known your mom for many years as well. Exactly. But anyway, so you're a young guy. How yeah. old are you? I'm like 25. So maybe 25. you know the wine cellar more kind of better than me probably. You were <laughs> probably like a toddler when I was. Yeah, I was sure. No, sure I, this was around 2005. Wow. So yeah, you were yeah. probably about what ten? I was like eight because I'm ninety-seven. Eight. You're ninety-seven. Twenty-five soon to be twenty-six. So you were born the year before I came to Friuli for the first time. Wow. Yeah, I came here in ninety-eight. It sounds like a lot. <laughs> I'm, wow. I'm very proud of you, Mattia. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a bond already. Like. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, you could be my son. <laughs> 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 anyway, so you you basically run the family winery now with yeah. your mom. I mean, it's a family thing. It's a family yeah. job. And actually, I'm very proud to say that also my sister now is in the wine cellar. Ah, okay. Yeah. How old is your sister? She is two years younger, so she's 23. Okay. And now it's a full year that she's working with us. Uh-huh. And it's very nice because both me and my sister, we have different story of how we ended up in the same place, but going to two different roads about it. Tell me about that. Yeah, because you you said that I'm very tall, right? Yes, <laughs> and we can say that Basketball probably player. Yeah, my height brought me here to to the wine cellar. Because when I was 16, I moved out to play basketball. A team bought me from Ferrara. You moved out of yeah, I moved Friuli. Out from I was living in Ferrara when I was 16. When you were 16, yeah, oh, from okay. 16 up until 20, kind of. Okay. Yeah, it was an amazing experience. You can imagine living alone, living with friends. Playing At basketball. 16 years yeah. old. Did you have like chaperones or anything? <laughs> or were I you had... like out partying and doing uh, crazy shit like I was a Drew nice Barry guy. Or 16? <laughs> you were a nice guy. I can't say that on me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do with the political correct thing. Exactly. All right. All right. I won't. I won't. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about this off the air. But hey, school say. was fine. Okay. School I was, was a nice fine? guy in school. Okay. So no problem at all. So if you were always super interested in basketball. Yeah. Yeah. Since like I was 10 or so. Okay. And I still do, even if I don't play anymore, because as you may know, running and a wine cellar, living in a wine cellar, living wine, it takes 100% of your time. And if you also want to have a life, you know, you have to take some things off. You can't have everything. It's something that I learned very early in my life. Uh -huh. Because like when I made a split decision to cut, ties with basketball okay. and start serious basketball and I mean and then coming to the wine cellar I did it like in one second because you have to decide yeah and, yeah so we were talking about you and your sister though mm -hmm. that you had different paths to enter so you left home at 16 to play basketball yeah and then and then uh, my mom when I was 20 I was starting university of engineering okay and I never even wanted to have something to do with wine. Like, really? I have zero passion at all. And my mom once said, like, please, Mattia, help me. Come to Vinitaly. I need some help. I know that you can talk with people and you'll be fine. You'll figure something out. I say, okay, I will have free food, free wine for like three, four days. Okay, why not? Why not? And then I fell in love. Like, bam. Really? Like, like in the movie, you know? Like when, uh, when you open your eyes, you get the lights and everything. 
And then so that's I never came back to Ferrara. Like I took the train back to Prepotto. Love you at know? first sight. Si. So what what was it that that during those three days there that made you fall in love with wine? Did you like go around and taste, or yeah. was it the contact with the people? I didn't know anything about wine, so you have to keep in mind that. So yeah, but I love the vibes. Uh-huh. I love the vibes. I love how serious something that I never I never knew about was. And I loved walking around. I loved seeing. I loved talking to people. And I said, like, wow, it's it's really nice. And like, uh, I want to go with that. I didn't like engineering, to be honest at all. It is a nice path, though. So it is a nice path for, to your life. But but wine is something else. Like, if you have the passion, and I was lucky enough to be struck by lightning and have wow. the passion. That's great. Yeah. And I'm very proud to say that. Yeah. And that's why now I'm hundred percent in the wine, in wine, and zero yeah. percent in basketball. And your sister? My sister, actually, she also wanted zero things to do with the wine. And uh, like after high school, she went nine months in Australia to work and, you know, to get the vibes, to to be a better person, to you learn a lot when you stay out for so long. For longer. wine or just to travel? No, she wanted to work. No, no, okay. she went there and she said, okay, I'll work, I earn some money, I'll learn better English, I'll make some new friends. Life experience. Right. Cool. Like a lot of most people go to Australia for. And then she came back, she started to have like a secretary job in, in a dental place. Okay. And she did it for like two years. She was nice because she's very good okay. at what she do. At what she she is very like direct and she knows what to do and then like in those two years that she was working there she saw me and my mom because we are like best friends like the environment in our wine cellar is very nice really so, we, like, so you we get share, along really well. we share the spotify playlist you're okay. you your me mom and, mom. and your si- yeah. oh you and your mom so, okay so you have so. a super good relationship <laughs> yeah. with your mom exactly 100%. that's great she's oh, that's an amazing great. woman huh okay yeah and so she saw the connection that me and my mom had, the fun that we had while working. You can imagine how many hours a day, every of day. Of course. Because we also have a bed and breakfast. Okay. And it's 20 years that we're having a bed and breakfast. You must <clears> have been <throat> one of the first. Yeah, probably. Because in Prepoto, that for was sure. something that started happening like 10 years ago. See. Maybe 15 years ago, See, people something. started putting And we in are now rooms. 20. Now you're 20 years, See. so you're way ahead of and the curve. And you can imagine, we still have some customer that came from the first day in 2003 and they come. come still now like we make dinner together now you must be you must be doing something right <laughs> yeah. obviously i figured it out yeah. yeah my mom was doing something right and then we pick it up so she saw you and your mom see she saw the really connection having, yeah that you were really connecting yeah. in the in the winery in the cellar working together see. she wanted to be a part of that and she wanted to be a part of it she saw that she could fit in because I'm really extrovert, I'm like the PR guy, to put okay. in simple words, besides I do it all. And she saw the void because she being a receptionist, she know how to handle all the computer stuff, all uh-huh. the paperwork, okay? Uh, okay? Which is like my kryptonite. Okay, <laughs> very well put, yeah, mine so too. I, I can do it, that stuff. And so I live in Italy. So. Invoices and registry Everything. and all of that stuff. So she's Everything. good at that because she's, she's good got that them. mindset. See, and she, you just want to. And I want. Get out I just want to enjoy bag. wines. You know. Yeah, exactly. I I have like a light motive in life that um, if you want to be good in wine, like one thing that you have to do is you have to meet as much people as possible. Okay. Because you will learn something from each of one of them. And so it's my way to learn more about wine. Okay. So I can't be behind the computer and every you're, day. You know? You're not just talking about wine people. You're talking about consumers. So Same. you're talking everyone. You manage to learn something from everyone Same. you meet. That's really good. Because also like even a simple customer who doesn't enjoy wine, but say to you, I really like your Scupettino. Like that means a lot because the people who don't know about wine are the biggest share of the market. Yeah, also, it's true. Even if I'm a little niche family wine cellar, a boutique wine cellar, it doesn't matter. You have to learn as much as possible because you never know what would happen like in 20 years from now. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Exactly. Yeah. 
So we should mention that you do produce Cupertino and you, yeah. <laughs> you are in the town of Prepolto. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So if we didn't get that off the top of the show, then yeah, we'd make that very clear. See, and just just one thing, like when I was 16, I moved away from Prepolto, which is a little city, in, little village, sorry, in Friuli. And I moved to Ferrara, which is a middle, middle side city in the middle of Italy. Yeah. I was like, wow, finally I can get to live with more people, you know, and bigger things and everything. And I can't stand staying reported so little, so countryside. Now I'm totally in love. Really? It's crazy how much I love Prepoto. Really? See. What is it that you love about Prepoto so much? But, what is it? What the, I mean, you've been there. I it, know, yeah, but I want to hear from you. Like the view is stunning. The fact that you are alone, but in 10 minutes you are everywhere. Yeah. The fact that you are surrounded by wine also. You can also I'm friends with a lot of wine sellers, so we like to taste to see each other. And the fact that there is so a nice atmosphere about Perpoto, it's difficult to put it in words, but that's why like even if it's a little village, it's a tourist village. Yeah. We have a lot of tourists. See. Really. And the nice thing is that it's not that you cross by while you walk while you go somewhere to go to Perpoto. You have to go to Perpoto because it's out of every single road. In Friuli, yeah, it's, it's not at like, the end of everything. <laughs> not like you pass through Prepoto going from si. Udine to Gorizia. Si. No, so oh, okay. Is, is there like a tight knit sort of community amongst you guys, producers um, in Prepoto? We are building it. You're we building, are building it. Uh, you know, now me and other, we are like the new generation. I would like to say, yeah, and we are building it. I'm very proud of what we are doing in Prepoto. Really, see, not for what we are doing right now, but for what we will do. Okay. And I'm sure of it. That's the point. Yeah, Even okay. if now it may seem that it's difficult because everything is difficult, but I'm sure that we will do something great. In well, I, I know that you, you have all the raw material and I want to talk more about that a little bit later mm. in the podcast because now I want to concentrate a little bit more on you and your farm mm. and what you're doing. Okay. So tell us a little bit, give us some sort of uh, dimensions of, of what you're doing, how big you are, okay. how, what kind of volumes we're talking about here. Uh, we are like a medium small wine cellar in Friuli Venezia Giulia. We're pretty relatable to most of any wine cellar in Friuli, but we are in Prepotto. We okay. have nine hectare. We make 40,000 bottles more or less. But you know, the average wine cellar in Friuli make 90% white. Okay. We make 50 white and 50 red. Okay. And so actually, we are planting more Schiopettino. So we want to be... That's really like, the focus. See, that yeah. is the focus. But Schiopettino di Prepotto, okay. obviously. Now, also, for example, is our 50-year anniversary, to be honest. 50-year anniversary, anniversary of, the, of also, the winery. Of the winery. Uh, yeah. Okay, wow. And we are building something new. By me being here for like seven harvests now, my six, sorry, my sister being here for like one and a half. Uh, we are putting some energy and some youth energy inside the wine cellar. And it really shows off. Like we are going to new new markets. We are exploring like the quality of our wines. In my point of view is getting higher. Okay. Also like how we take people inside. The welcoming part is getting really better. Really important. Yeah. Yeah. We believe a lot in that too. Like, I'm pretty honest that we will do like 30% of our total sales in the wine cellar, which is really? quite a lot. That's very high for you. See, it's very high. Very high. But we have believed in that. My mom have believed in that since she was like, since she started working in the wine cellar, which is, was 1999. Okay. And I'm also picking that up. Okay. Because also, like, the more customer you get, the more you talk with them, the more you learn what I was saying to you like 10 minutes ago. Right. So it's a never ending learning and to be better in what you do. Like my goal is to have 50%. 50% my, sales. Yeah. yeah. I think that should be the goal for, yeah, it's especially in a place like Prepoto that I think gets a lot of tourism. I think. See. Do you <laughs> think Prepoto is set up for a lot of tourism? It's getting to set up. It's getting it's set getting up. Because like, it's such a small place. Yeah. But I, I love Prepoto, and I think that it has so much potential to be like a, in a major hub. Why can't it be like Montalcino? Why can't, Why it, be can like, it be? It has yeah. everything. Yeah, We have also have more rain than Montalcino. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, I, when I think, and I've, I've said this before on the podcast, there are like, I think there are certain places in Friuli mm. 
that sort of are becoming like these, trying to think of the right word for it. They're becoming these enclaves, like these special little okay. places. Like the first place that comes to mind for me, obviously, is <laughs> Ribola di Oslavia. Okay. Okay. See, so Oslavia. Like Os- Oslavia have seven producers and the whole world goes to Oslavia because see. of those seven producers. Because of what they created. What they created. Yeah. And I, there's no way that that could not happen exactly the same way in Pripoto. Exactly. Also because we are lucky, when I say that we are lucky to be in Pripoto, it's because we are lucky to have the Schiopettino di Pripoto. Right. That is the big deal connected to how beautiful and nice and calm and relaxing Pripoto is. But I'm pretty honest when I say that we probably have the wine of the future in our hands. Okay, why do you say that? Tell me about that. I mean, That's really interesting. The wine I don't know of the how future. many of you guys have tasted Schiopettino di Prepotto o di Cialla, but Schiopettino is such a unique variety. And it's the nice thing about Schiopettino is that you can taste it and drink it with everything. It's a high, high quality red wine, much similar to a Pinot Noir, maybe also from Burgundy. We have yeah. some nice connection with them. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, Having something so nice that you can try in appetizer, talking with friends, first plate, second plate, like in summer, like an hour and a half in, in the fridge, and you get a very nice cold scupettino. Yeah. You can still get the pepper out of it. Exactly. Or as also like from the pepper side, and also from such how elegant it is, because it's a very, like the perfect word. I say to this also when I talk with Italian people, like, the perfect word to describe Schipettino is smooth. Yes. Because also you, the sound of smooth describes what Schipettino in your palate is. Okay. Which I found very nice. And so you can also, combining the pepper side and the smoothness, you can also have it with some r- nice fish. I've had Schipettino with fish. See. So tell me, find me a red wine, because you know red wine is still the best, like... The thing that is bigger than the whites. Yeah. Probably. When we talk about fine wine in the world, See. 90% of the time, unfortunately, we talk about yeah. red wine. I'm not saying that it's good or bad. I'm saying that That's it is what it is. is. Okay? Exactly. And so by having such a unique wine in our hands, and also when I told you that we are looking at the Pinot Noir for Burgundy, it's very nice because we have the path build. We just have to walk it. Okay. Which for me, it's like, I'm not going to say that we're going to copycat, but it's nice to have a path when okay. you want to achieve something bigger. So do you have this kind of idea of like separating vineyards and finding yeah. crews and all that sort of stuff? I'm, Is that like yeah. the, that sort of burgundy model? That's my idea. I have really? also something bigger in mind. Uh, I, I can't say it, okay. but it's very, it's very big. I still don't know if it's good or bad. Okay. But I love the idea. You Maybe we'll it. talk afterwards. Or like two years from now, I'll come back. <laughs> Maybe even five. I hope I'm still here. But anyway, but yes, you two will, years. You of will. course, yes. We're actually drinking some Schiopettino di Propoto right now. What, uh, what vintage is this? This is 2019. 2019. So this is current so release. This is the current. It's almost finished. Okay. Yeah. Like now, we'll, on Monday, I will ship some to Boston. Tw- right. 2019. <laughs> 2019. Really? Yeah. yeah. You do, like, so you do a lot of work in America and, and actually only in Boston, only, only in, Boston. in Boston. That's your only American market. That's my only American market. But we've working together for like fifteen years or so. And you you told me before the show that you actually went on a podcast in Boston. Yeah. <laughs> so you're not a podcast virgin like I usually like to have my producers exactly. here in Friuli. That this is the first podcast I've ever been on. So I can't say that with you. So. You're very Sorry. comfortable behind the <laughs> microphone. No, it makes you a better guest, actually. Thank you. More, more, but more it's very relaxed. nice. It's yeah. very nice. Boston is a great city. Boston is an amazing city. I spent I, a whole month there. A month? Yeah. Wow. I did an exchange because the, oh, like, the sales guy, he has um, a daughter. So we did an exchange. I went a month there, and she went a month to Prepoto. Here? Ah. Yeah. Wow. And how did she come out of that? I mean, she enjoyed. She yeah. enjoyed. Like she, I told you, Prepoto is beautiful. She wanted to stay in Prepoto, or she, she like, wanted to. But really? also, we took her to the expo in Milan. Okay. That was like 2016. Pretty. No, okay. B- it was before I think the expo. I expo Never mind. Milan. I thought it was like 2018. Oh, I don't remember. I don't remember either. No. Sorry, COVID took. <laughs> COVID. Yeah, everybody's got COVID fog. COVID <laughs> fog is a real thing, guys. It is a real thing. So 
you were saying that you have nine hectares. Yeah. Is that big and for Prepoto? Uh, I would say that it's average, average. nothing special. Nothing special, okay. Uh, we just bought like a little three lines. So now we are 9.3, I think. Okay. But the nice thing of which I'm really proud of is that the nine hectares that we have are sprouted in seven different vineyards. Seven different positions. Se yeah. Okay. And outside of two vineyards, who are alone, and the both of them have 55 years old. Okay, so old vines. Old vines, and there are single vineyards of Friulano and Merlori Serva. Okay. The others are all divided in different varieties inside. Okay. So that's why we can make a lot of micro vinification on every single cell. Okay. And so making more complexity in our wine by mixing different starting points of the same variety. Okay. Can you give what 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 are some of the differences that you find in the different parcels? Like different for example, places? even if we are little, we are kind I know that we make a very good Sauvignon. Okay. We are specialized. You're in famous that. for Sauvignon, I think. I I think I can say that. And not sound too cocky. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we make true. We make a classic who's a blend of three different Sauvignon. Okay. And we make a reserva who's a hundred percent a late harvest, but it's coming from a uh, vineyard who's in a very humid place. Okay. And it, it, it is very interesting. We do a late harvest there. It stays in special wood for eight months. Then eight months in the bottle. It, it is not a Sauvignon from Friuli. Uh-huh. Is it, it not? Botrytis or any, any no, crazy No, it's not stuff? botrytis. No. It goes more into the fruity sensation, okay. but not being exotic fruit. And Propoto is a fairly cool place. Yeah. So it makes it perfect for Sauvignon, first It makes of all, it perfect for Sauvignon. But also for Scipitino. Yeah, because Scipitino has been shown that even in years when the, the temperature, the rain is not as what you would like to get, so it's more rainy, less hot and everything, you still get a very good amount of pepper. And maybe it changes a little bit in the Mapalaf. So you, you feel when it is uh, like a rainy and like it is... Now we are living in a rainy season, in a rainy and cold season. And so uh, we don't know how much it will last. Obviously for 2023, we still have to see. It's a little early, yeah. And see, it's too early. But if it will continue like this, the Scupettino is going to be like 2014. Okay, guys, it was a very bad year in Friuli. Yeah. Go to a very nice restaurant like I did when I went to La Subida and try a Scupettino 2014 now. Your mind will explode. That's exactly the same thing that Paolo Petrusa said to yeah. me, like a long time ago, wow. like in 2018. He said, Schiopettino from 2014, stop talking about 2014 being a bad year. He says, Schiopettino from 2014 is going to be the best Schiopettino you've ever yeah. had. And you concur with that. Yeah, I can. I tasted one from a very nice producer, like at La Subida, so a very nice place also. And it was amazing. Amazing. Why do you think in a year that was so wet and everybody says, even when the wines came out, everybody's like, oh, 2014, no, don't you have the 2015? I know. Why is it so uh, great? Why it is so great? My idea uh, is like that Scupettino by being burned in Prepotto. And Prepotto has always been like a very rainy and cold place. He gets used to. Uh -huh. And then also another thing, you get more rotundone out of it when it's cold, when it's rainy. I've heard And this. what is rotundone? Rotundone is the pepper, to exactly. put it in simple words, obviously. Yeah, rotundone, if, if I remember correctly, the riper you get, the less you feel the rotundone. Like ripeness is sort of the, correct me if I'm wrong, no, that's fine. You have to tell me what ripe is. Maturita. Ah, okay. okay. So more mature. See. So if you put Scipatino in a place like Butrio. No, it would not hot. be the same. It's not you. You lose all of that. See, but like you can find it now, the Schiopettino di Prepotto and the Schiopettino who's made outside of Prepotto, there are two different things. I totally agree. There are two different things. I'm not gonna say that mine is better or there's better. There are two different things. The character is different. The character you can feel when a Schiopettino is off Prepotto and when it's not. Is and it, that's the beauty it, of the wine. Is it the Rotundone or are there other things? It's the Rotundone. For it's me. the Rotundone. It's the Rotundone. Yeah. We have more. Always. And it, it has been shown also by data, by really? the European so Commission. This is yeah. tested. It was tested by an amazing study that was made by, by a lab. I don't remember the name. And it has been shown. It was a two-year study. 
Wow. Wow. See, I, I will send you the fines and everything. So that literally there's something about Perpoto. There's a reason why Schiopettino sì. was born in, in, in between Schiopettino and Perpoto and Cialla. Exactly. There's something about there the, something. The, that place. Exactly. That is and also like, for you have to imagine, you know, Perpoto, we have 720 people living, more 20 more or less. 720. 20 wow. plus or more. It's huge. I don't know. Amazing. We have more than like to stay low more than 15 quality wine cellar. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. We have 450 hectares. Okay. And the and the mm, the comune, how you say in comune, the in the town. And the town yeah. is like 25 kilometers long. It's pretty long. It's pretty long, Prepoto. We have so many different areas, both for the soil and both for the the terroir, right. obviously. But it's made to make wine, Prepoto. That is the beauty, like the geography of how Prepoto is. It's astonishing. Really? It's fantastic. And yeah. Schiopettino is uniquely adapted to that yeah. place. Like Schiopettino has lived in a perfect condition to make wine for God knows how many years. Yeah, I've heard it's... it's I heard it a very big 3, number. 3,000 years. Yeah. Yeah. I heard four. You have 4,000 years. I heard years. four. Yeah. Like, because it has no biotypes that are similar to it. There's Same. nothing that's related to it. Same. And that's why, like, we're talking a lot about Scupertino, but it will be the grape of the future because it's too good to not be. That's my mindset. Like, So here's a question for you, then. Yeah. Because I totally agree with you. I love Scupertino. I always have loved Scupertino. But a... A, a grape variety that needs such a particular place mm. to show its best. How how does that become the grape variety of the future? It's always going to be such uh, a what niche. I'm, uh, I'm I'm doing a little bit lazy here. I'm <laughs> saying Schiopettino, but I'm saying Schiopettino di Prepotto okay. will be the grape of the future. Okay, sorry guys. Yeah. I remember there was. I a, had a long night yesterday, <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't invite me. <laughs> Sorry, no, it's okay. Uh, no, I remember, and, and and maybe one of the listeners can correct me, but I remember somebody telling me that the Italian Trade Commission did some sort of report about grapes, and this was before the pandemic, so 2018, 2017, something like that, and they said the emerging grape varieties from yeah. from Italy were like Falangina. Ribola Gialla and, and Schiopettino. Schiopettino. Yeah, I, I read that too. You read that too. Yeah. So you can confirm that. So, so I'm, wasn't not, dreaming. I'm not too crazy to say what I say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They, yeah, yeah, not yeah, too crazy. I to, but I totally agree. And I think Schiopettino is a fascinating grape variety. And also like, since we also have like the Cialla, the, wine, the, Cialla, the Cialla wine cellar. Right. They showed us like how Schiopettino can age and how beautiful it is. Exactly. Actually, I'm starting something like that. Ah, you're gonna hold I'm very proud of bottles. that. I it's now two years that 2017, 2018, 2019 is coming that I'm making the Schiopettino di Prepotto Riserva, who's coming from a single vineyard. Oh, okay. that I decided it will be the future. That vineyard I made only 665 bottles the first year. Okay, then I will stabilize two weeks. one to no. I only one work with Tono. You only work with I tono. only work okay. with Tono. And because I found it better for Scupettino. Okay. Because of this, I mean, you guys know why. And on especially also old to know. Okay. I have some, someone also 20 plus year old to know. 20 year old to know. Yeah. Yeah. Still in good shape. Still in good shape. Yeah. yeah. That's great. If you can treat them right and if you clean and everything, they still give you what you want. Okay. And so I will start to do something like Chala. I will not sell everything. I will store as like I still don't know how many. It doesn't matter. I have time, and I will store as so then I will be able to do what Sala do. Okay, I'll be able to sell you like a f box of six different vintages of Scupettino Prepoto amazing. Riserva. If you could get everybody in yeah. Prepoto on board it to do be. something like that, the only thing as a child I also know the problem is true. I mean, the first one is money, but it's not really a problem. Like you store as little bottle. You do what you do. Right. The big problem is space. Space. You need yeah. space and yeah, yeah. good space. It's yeah. not that you can leave them outside. <laughs> They're not <laughs> exactly. kids. <laughs> like, ah, yeah, just put the old bottles outside behind the barn. It's fine. See. It's no big deal. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so you have to have a place to keep you these bottles well. And like, even if I keep like 120 bottles every year, 
What, what if, why don't you do like a communal storage? That's my facility? idea. Is I would love idea? to do that. So you there all is a space have a that place. I have in mind. That yeah, same because it like storage quality wines. Like also a thing that I would love to do. All my wines to be one year in the bottle because bottle bottle aging is the best aging in my idea. Really? Yeah, bottle aging outside why of is that because it changed the wine in such a elegant way uh -huh. that no wood, no steel, no salmon can do to me. Wow. Okay. Obviously, it takes more time, but bottle aging, it's the best aging. Really? So you want to sort of create like a communal facility that everybody can sort of... It would be room. a dream. That would yeah. be the dream, yeah. It will be also cost, uh, cost uh, happy because like yeah, if you do effective. it all together, you have like... It's not difficult to find a capannone, how you say? Like a, a warehouse. warehouse. Yeah, yeah a warehouse. Exactly. And put some refrigerator and cooling system then put all the wines inside it. Exactly. It would not be that hard. Exactly. And you divide the cost. Yeah, you divide, you divide the, the cost. Yeah, exactly. So you said you make Schiappettino di Propoto I and have, Schiappettino di Propoto Riserva. Yeah. Do you have, are those your only two Schiappettini? Or do I you make have also, other... uh, it's not officially a Schiappettino. Okay. It's something particular. Uh, all right. <laughs> Maybe you know that, right? What? They do a donne. They do a donne. Do no, a donne means two women. Two, of course. Yeah, which is half Schiappettino and half Sangiovese. Half Sangiovese? Yeah. But which I planted now. <laughs> I was going to say, you didn't plant that in I didn't also. plant, don't worry. No. Maybe we did talk about this. Yeah, yes. we did talk about it. Yeah, It's from uh, an amazing place. Like, first of all, due donna means two women for right. all of you non-Italian. Two ladies. <laughs> two ladies, yeah. And um, they're friends for a long time. One, obviously, is my mom, Anna. Okay. And the other is Susanna, which is also a fantastic wine producer from Tuscany. Okay. They're friends for a long time. They, we have almost like the same wine cellar, same vibes, same high quality, I would like to say. Mm -hmm. But she's in Chianti, so usually like Chianti Sangiovese, they would not mesh well with Schiappettino. Okay. But what is the lucky thing here? Is that she's in Lamole. And Lamole, if you guys don't know, which is in the Chianti Classico area, is seven to six to 700 meters above sea level. Okay. So the particularly yeah, high. The, for... the Sangiovese that she makes are so nice in the city and so elegant and so different from all the Sangiovese. Okay. Which is why now a lot of big company are buying land in Lamole. This is really a, yeah, because you it's know cooler. Tuscany, no rain. Right. Being high help. High yeah, a little bit of cool. And so that's air. why a lot of people are buying land in Lamole. Huh. And that's why we're able to mesh two wines so different from each other. So do you, this this due due donne project is obviously her and yeah, your mom yeah, exactly. Right? So does she sell a due donne as well? Yeah, we all have our own due donne. We met halfway. We exchanged the wine. Okay. We bottle in two different places, but the wine is the same. Okay, but it's bottled obviously in two. So do you places. send up like the 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 wine from Tuscany? We meet each other so we can have a okay. talk and have a laugh okay. together. No, but I'm just saying, how does the Sangiovese... Yeah, I make my wine, she make hers. Right. We meet, we And then exchange. you send each other a, a truck yeah, kind of, of wine. Si, si, okay. si. <laughs> and then you, you, you do your blend. Eh, eh. That, must be, that must be cool, sitting at the table and sort of like tasting your Sangiovese and your yeah. Schiappettino apart and, you can... and then putting them together <laughs> and seeing how that blends. And also it's 50-50, so it's 50% yeah. 50, 50. Is it always 50-50? It has always been. And that's why some years is different than the other. Okay. Which is one of the beauty things about the wine. Yeah, you, you know, it's not. Yeah, it's not Coca Cola. It's, <laughs> yeah. the same thing. it's not the same things every day. Yeah, no. exactly. So Sauvignon, two yeah. versions. Sauvignon, Schiappettino, uh, two versions plus Due Donne. Plus one. Okay. I have to what say else? that Friuliano. Uh, we are a Friulian wine cellar. Okay. okay. And we have we all guys in Friuli. We have a disease. What is this? Disease? We make too many varieties. <laughs> like, come on. I'm trying to cut something. I'm, it's difficult. Like imagine, like you have five child getting rid of one of them. Exactly. It's not easy. Which child should we <laughs> sell? Should we launch for some numbers? Experiments. On? <laughs> yeah. I make thirteen different labels. Fuck. Yeah. Ah, so we are allowed to say that? Yeah. I was holding that the whole no, time. No, <laughs> you don't have to hold back. No, this is a this is not a family show. Okay, okay, perfect. You make 13, 13 14, yeah. Wow. Every time I count them, it's difficult. Yeah. Because, but 
for me, this is a problem that has kept Friuli. Friuli was the third most important region in the 90s. I know. And after, Friuli was. After Piedmont and Tuscany, it was Friuli. It, Friuli was, not is, the third best region in the country. Was, exactly. Maybe not by, like, the quality in Friuli is very high. Yeah. But the perception of Friuli is not as high as the quality. And to me, one of the problems with that, that went from the 90s until now, is that we do not have a flagship wine. Uh -huh. We are known to have, oh, they make beautiful whites. But beautiful whites is not a wine, guys. <laughs> no. And that's why a lot of wine sellers, they make uh, lots and lots of varieties. Like, I'm pretty average for the variety that I make, but some people, they make 18, 20, 25. I remember when I first came here, I went to, I can't remember what winery is, I won't say. Even if I did remember, I won't say. But I remember they had 22 mm. labels. They had 22 different labels. Like, my goal would be free whites, sorry, free whites, free red, maybe four because I'm in Prepoto, but seven. Seven but labels. That's seven, eight, something like that. Yeah. Just to work, but it's difficult to cut all those. Do you have a good market for all of those wines? Uh, yeah, we, we are selling them. We're so that them. makes it even harder. Uh, you, know. you know, if there was one bastard <laughs> child, then you could yeah. just say, yeah, let's get rid of him. And you also know. like, even if you sell them, but not in the best way, like, but you sell them. Right. Maybe in more than one year or so. But the vines, most of my vines are 20, 25 year old. How right. can you cut them? Yeah, exactly. You feel me? How can you cut? Of course. Like I make Cabernet Franc. I made 10 hectoliters of Cabernet Franc, which is 1.3 thousand bottle, which is a good wine. It's a good wine. It's good fruit and wine. But how can you cut those plants? Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah, it's like cutting the heads off of. But 25 year, they make very good wine. What yeah. have they done wrong? Well, well, what about like selling that wine or selling those grapes? Is yeah. that something that you could not selling about? the grapes? No, you have to sell the mm, wine in bulk. The vine, the, the vineyard. You, that's what you. Uh, you no, I'm, do. I'm talking like oh, you should. You're saying sell the vineyard. Maybe sell the vineyards, but the vineyards is inside other my vineyards yeah. because we have more varieties in more um, in more vineyards. Exactly, and sell just selling the grapes to. Yeah, but somebody I who don't wants want, to make like, more I'm a, Cabernet Franc. We are a quality wine seller. Like selling grape is, yeah, you feel. I gotcha. I understand. It's yeah. like working so hard because we work hard. Yeah, in the fields and we try to make the best out of it, and then you sell the grape. Like, come on, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I worked all this time, and now See? I got to sell the grapes. Yeah. So this is will be a difficult choice. Are there? I don't know. I mean, I love this idea that there's so much cooperation going on in Propolto. Could yeah, you maybe. all get together and sort of like sell, like that all put something. your Cabernet Francs together uh, <laughs> and make there one. There are so much discussion that yeah. can start from here. Exactly. If you feel what I feel and yeah. if you think what I think, something. Be that, uh, but we are in Italy, it's complicated. Yeah. Well, it is complicated. So you you do a bunch of wines. So is there any one that you are, you're like absolutely sure that you would cut? Like, you know, that's okay. This one I really don't need. Or are all they all of them really close to your heart? No. Like all the parents, they have a favorite child. Yeah. I have some favorite wines. Okay. Obviously. Cabernet Franc I would cut. Okay. Maybe the classic Merlot, which also is very good. Yeah. But I would cut. So you want, you're looking more to concentrate on local varieties yeah. rather than I want to make more Schipettino. More Schipettino. I just, even if I'm very good in Sauvignon, I just took out, the vineyard wasn't perfect, so it was an easy thing. I just oh. took out 0 0.3 hectares of Sauvignon and I will put wow. Schipettino. Ah, so it's investing always more. In we are investing in Schipettino. Schipettino. We already have two hectares, which for Prepotto is quite high. Okay. That's why I made a good amount of Schipettino di Prepotto. But now with the reserve and everything, we have to do more. It's so good. Yeah. So good. Have to do like more. as we are drinking now, it's perfect also to talk and laugh and mm. yeah. think about wine. So in freely wide, you feel like, ah, oh, finally, you saw that my glass <laughs> is empty. Sorry, I was looking for your eyes the whole time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, in for you, you, so you feel like this is freely in general produces too many wines. Yeah. So I would you, always say that. If you could wave a magic wand and there would be X number of wines in Friuli, what would be the number and what would be the wines? So you 
how many different variety would yeah be. Uh, it's now it every wine cellar has to think of its own like okay you know it's not that i would put like no more cabernet no me. yeah no more merlot because maybe you have a fantastic place like ferlat makes an amazing cabernet amazing Frank. cabernet Frank. how can you take that away from away him? from him yeah okay and everyone you do what you do and you what you have to do but we should have a bigger focus yeah and it's, Maybe so it just goes winery by winery. Each Same. winery has to have their focus, not necessarily an image Same. for the... We don't have... No, Schiopettino should be more important in, in the region itself. Okay. But it's difficult because so we don't have enough also. So we, we also should plant more Schiopettino, like also in Prepotto. Yeah. We should plant more. You, you need more critical mass. Yeah, basically. exactly. So you've been involved a lot in sort of the... Uh, to use a dirty word, politics. <laughs> dirty <laughs> word. <laughs> uh, of of Prepolto. Yeah, yeah, You I did. used to be the I, president. I used to be the president of, of the association. Wow. Yeah. At 25 years Even old. Even less. Even less. I think I was 22, 24. Oh, my because God. Because I did two years long. So how how did you manage to do that? I mean, uh, how did the, the Comune of Prepolto, all these pr producers, no, they put their trust in a guy who's 22 years old. I told you, I like to talk with people and okay. I'm always open-minded to talk and to discuss about everything. And I'm, I think I never go crazy. Like we could talk about everything. You can say me everything. I would not be angry about it, which is okay. something that helps. Yeah. And the association at that moment needed something like that. Okay. And I'm very proud of what I did. I keep the boat afloat. For two okay. years, mm -hmm. which was COVID years. COVID years. COVID years. Oof, Can you imagine that? Yeah. Being so young and having like, okay, what we do, what we do, and there is COVID. Like, wow. Not as easy. So not much you can do. Not much as you can do. We did some great uh, sommelier tasting around Italy. And we did some stuff like that. But the most important thing that I'm proud of I put three new members inside during COVID. Ah. And they paid for it. They <laughs> you know, it's funny. It's yeah. nice. They paid to enter during my presidential run. Call it like you want. So you you So they saw something. New new producer in Prepotto okay. making Scipitino Prepotto. And they came inside the association. So, nice. so they came in because they liked they they saw something about you that they liked. I or prefer to watch them. it more than they liked what the association was, was doing, what has been, and what will do. Okay. So, so I would not say that they like me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just you. No, okay. no, it was absolutely so what, not. What What else does the, 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 the what is it? A, not a consortio. No, it's not. A, it's an association. Association of, of Schipatino di uh, The most important thing that I'll forever be grateful for to all the, the older generation, I can say without being <laughs> offensive. Of so, course. They made the Schiopettino di Prepotto. Yeah. They made the, the disciplinare, like the set of rules. They went to Roma and they did what they had to do. And they made in 2008 okay. the first vintage of Schiopettino di Prepotto, okay. which is something huge. Without that, where would, where would I be? Okay. Like, so where is, where is the association going now that uh, you're not president? Now that I'm not president, we have an amazing president now, which is Michela Marinid from the okay. Marini's uh, wine cellar. Okay. We are starting to build something. We want to, what, I, we are talking a lot. Okay. We are talking a lot for the big thing that I told you at the beginning. Okay, that you can't say. And I can't say. Okay. We are talking because it's a big thing and like all the big thing, you never know, you have to talk a lot before. Yeah. That is the main thing. And we're building like, um, is we're a, trying to do more tasting, more stuff more events. also events yeah. but also more like uh brain uh, say when you say a lot of things brainstorming like, yeah brainstorming okay so there's there's a good feeling amongst the group see si, see si, there is yeah. a good thing because i know there was a time when there wasn't yeah, a like, good feeling there was like, every, kind of in every like, good wedding you have to <laughs> curse at each other sometimes you know <laughs> yeah, you, have, yeah, you know my wife and i married 21 years yeah, yeah we have our fights from time to time so yeah i guess it's normal that you have your moment when you don't understand and you build each from that. other. That's yeah. what I like to do. You improve. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And so you think you're on an upswing now. Uh, we will be. You will be. We will be. Okay. We still, have, because, you know, three years of COVID, 
was difficult. Yeah. Every seller now had to look up on, on the survival thing. It's on every yeah. single wine seller because you imagine. But now we are building it. How many producers are in the We are now 16. 16. We used to be more. Okay. Someone out, someone in, okay. as I can say. I'm sure that if we start working how I see, because I still like help a lot as much as possible, obviously, okay. even if I'm not present, but I put my 100% effort. Okay. Uh, we, If we will build, they will come inside the bank again. Okay. And see, I'm so much respect for the association and what they did. I believe, and I've been saying this for a couple of years now, I believe that Prepolto needs like a star, Michelin star restaurant. If you could somewhere uh, in Prepolto, like right smack in the middle of Prepolto. It would be very nice. Yeah, because then it becomes even more of a destination. Just imagine, we have two near, yeah. but not in. No, I'm, yeah, because I know yes. Argine is very Argine, close, right? Subida. Subida is close, also. exactly, yeah. But I'm talking, it has to be in yeah. Prepolto. So this way the people go there for that and they stay for that, you know. It will put higher level of tourism. Higher level because of tourism. Because also like, we are not a mass tourism place. No. We already have higher quality of the people coming in Prepolto. Right. But, uh, Where are most of your folks coming from who visit Prepolto? Uh, we are mainly like Germany and Austria. Germany is the main thing. Okay. But COVID for Friuli was very helpful. Really? COVID, yeah, because like a lot of people, they said, okay, I want during COVID, I want to spend my money in Italy because I want to help Italy. But I want to go where I've never been and I want to go where there are not so many people. And guess what is the perfect description for what I just told you? Exactly. Friuli. Yeah. So now we are having way more Italian because they went already. Okay. And I'm pretty sure that they, they went during COVID, sorry. And I'm pretty sure that that helped also like if people came to Friuli for the first time, they saw how beautiful, because Friuli, it's very beautiful. Right. It's natural. It's true to himself, which is something very big. What does that mean? Because it's not being sold. It's authentic. Okay. It's authentic. It's nice. The people are very nice. It's not commercial. It's not commercial. It's, it's true. not like, uh, sorry for your friend, mom's friend, but it's not like Chianti. Yeah. You know? Friuli is true to himself. Yeah. It's it's a real experience. See? Yeah. And also in Friuli, like in one hour, you are everywhere. Everywhere. Like, everywhere. Yeah. You can go from Grado, which is stunning. Grado exactly. is stunning. You can go through the hills of Collio, Collio Orientali. And then you can go to i laghi di, laghi di Fusine. Fusine, esatto. Like Fusine or, lakes are... Or Trieste. Yeah, or Trieste. Exactly. In one day, you could do all three of those things. Probably. Easily. Yeah. yeah. So... Yeah, no, I totally agree with you about that. So what do you think would really help Prepolto as a, to bring people to Prepolto? I said it's a star restaurant. Do you have an idea uh, of what you think would I'm help? Sure that to a restaurant, I mean, is not something that we could afford to do, like in money, money things and also in, right. you need someone that loves Prepoto as much as I do well, and want have, to make a Michelin star restaurant. But that's, well, that's what I mean, yeah. yeah. You have to, it has to be like someone who says, I'm going to make like a hot restaurant, I'm going to yeah. do it there because they see the potential there. Because Not Prepoto. someone is like, okay, Prepoto's going to put down like a big fat wad of money and lure <laughs> in some No, no, you need chef. someone no. who loves Prepoto. Yeah. Now, I know it. To make more, like we... First of all, maybe we need more bed and breakfast. You need one, two restaurant more. Okay. Also. How but, many restaurants are there in Prepolto? Uh, I also count Dolegna and Bernico because they're so okay. close. They're so close. But we are very nice restaurant. Like Trattoria da Mar. I, I go to Vienna very to Vienna very often. Okay. People in Vienna know Trattoria da Mario more than they know Prepolto sometimes. Ah, uh, yeah. Trattoria yeah, yeah. da Mario is so huge. It's iconic. Ocean. See, it's an iconic thing. Yeah. Like the Maialata there, it's. You know, guys, it's I like haven't had it in years, but it's so... <laughs> ah, shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't. It's a long time I haven't had it, but I know it really so, well, and I love, love, love it. Yeah. We and have, they're lovely people, too. They're lovely people. Yeah. See, see, very lovely people. Yeah. And we have four or five, something like that. Yeah. See, see. But, so and the quality is high. So no more bed and breakfasts. More bed and breakfast, so. which is coming. Yeah. Some people are making more. You are talking about wineries. Or wineries, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's expanding. 
Uh, but what I think is that we should find a way to let the people know how beautiful Perpoto is. Mm. My idea is maybe to make more events in Perpoto. Okay. And maybe also go somewhere to talk about Perpoto. Right. So I have no idea. But also like one thing, the quality is getting better. And so that will bring more people to Perpoto. Yeah. The perception of Perpoto as a high tier quality wine place right. has to grow and that will do the job. Probably. Yeah. I think, I think that, yeah, if you can, you get the reputation for the wine going, yeah. which is already on a really good track because people who know wine know Scupatino. And then you can sort of also sell the tourism side, right? Yeah. Knowing that you have the facilities and places so, where people can stay. Right, right. Um, I think, yeah, it's really good. So bringing people in, not just from the wine side, so wine journalists no. and things like that, but travel people. Travel people. Travel people are really important, right? So, because if, they, if people are looking for a place to go and they say, well, let's go to Propolta. I don't know a whole lot, a whole lot about wine or Scupatino, but it looks like a really beautiful place to go then they'll sc discover Scipatino si. on their own, si. right? Are you also involved in Enjoy Perpoto? I'm old, I'm, enjoy, I'm involved in everything. You're involved <laughs> you in know everything. Me. You got your finger in a lot of pies. I told you I like to talk with people. Yeah. yeah. So tell me about Enjoy Perpoto, because I know that's the guy from Spolerda. Yeah, uh, the, mm. the main head behind that, uh, Ricardo, Ricardo from yeah, Spolerda, and also Caterina from the Scribano di Turismo. Exactly. They are the true main heads, the one who put more effort in it. And they are doing an incredible job. It it was burned from the word enjoy, okay. which we all know what it means. And enjoy is not only wine. So we've put inside also agriturismi, restaurant, and whoever wanted to be a part of. We also have like a natural guide. Uh, okay. Yeah, so because, you can take walks. and Yeah, and that's what we do also. Sometimes we organize a walk guided by a professional yeah. through the fields, through the vineyards, through the forest to learn about Perpoto, to learn about the woods, to learn about everything. And I then did, maybe you have some wine also. I did a really cool event at, at Spolair where we did a, a, a blind wine tasting, literally yeah, blind, where yeah. we, we blindfolded ourselves. Yeah, which was really very cool. Si. And then we went and we, we had a wonderful lunch at Scribano. See, si. Scribano so, is an amazing place. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was really- It's a hidden really, gem. Yes, a, a hidden, hidden gem. gem. I would say that about Perpoto in general. Si. <laughs> Hidden but gem. maybe Perpoto has to stay like that. Yeah. Stays a hidden gem. Has stay not so the... hidden, but has. It shouldn't become like Chianti. Yeah. You know. It but should... it, it can't be like Chianti. Because it doesn't have that infrastructure. Yeah. Yeah. You saw like Perpoto is not so, really not so many houses also. Like, it, well, you seven, need houses, 720 people. 720 <laughs> people, for God's sake. Yeah. How many houses could there possibly be? Not so many. <laughs> There's like a hundred houses probably. Is there so, a lot of construction going on? Like uh, people building houses in Primpol? No, more like making it better. Making more it like, better. Yeah. Improving. Improving. Okay. And there is a lot of wine. There is not so much space available. So we yeah. have to reshape probably the vineyards to put more Scupatino, which is what I'm doing also. Okay. Other producers, are they thinking the same way that you do? Or? I think they are. I think they are. Yeah. But is is it true that somebody planted glera in Pripolta? I have no idea. You don't have to tell no, me. Who maybe it is. I saw it, but it was like nothing. I like, I have no idea who it was. But it's not a place I for heard, glera. No, Come but on, I heard guys. a rumor that somebody actually did that. See, but I think it was like me. one line. Okay, maybe just to make fun, or you know. Okay, but I don't think it was any real wine cellar. Gotcha. Probably it was someone that wanted to. Uh, but glera is it's a huge thing in. If you want yeah. to make money. If you want to make money, Glera is a huge thing. Is the way to go. Yeah. Not in Propoto. Not in Propoto. Obviously. Yeah, for God's sake. Like, no. Propoto, it's, there is so much history also in Propoto. Like, behind my place, there is a church right, have, right to my house. Yeah. And there is a, a great uh, basso relievo, I don't know how to say. Uh, uh, something written in the stone. Bas relief, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it's written in Roman numbers. So the date of foundation, which is 1708. One seven zero eight. Yeah, the date of so foundation of the bur of the church. Okay, but the written itself, it's covered in symes and vines. So, ah, so there, so, so some of the not the letters are written, 
but there are vines all over them. Ah. So it's a big testimony of how people understand that in Tripoto you can make so even nice wine. Three hundred years ago, yeah. they were there making are, wine. Yeah, there. there are stories even from from the Rieppi family. Uh, probably I'll be mistaken, but I think it was from the thirteenth century. Wow, I'm not so sure. Like eighty percent sure. I still have to talk with them. I need more time. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you got you do a lot of things. See, you do a lot See. of things. See. So, um, Paolo Rodaro okay. always taught me that you have to ask three questions of a mm. producer. Mm. I'm scared now, guys. Okay. <laughs> so, can't think about it too much. Okay. So, the first question is, what color is your winery? Oh. I would say orange. Orange. Okay. And we don't make any orange wines. Right. But we are in the middle between white and reds. Okay. So orange. So and also it's my favorite color. That's also your okay. That's yeah. a good reason. The other one is tell me about a wine that left a really, really big impression upon you. Something that you really, really remember. A bottle of wine that just oh, is always there in your head that you just cannot forget. You know, when someone asks me something like that, I always like to say that I'm a son of my mom. Okay. And my mom has terrible memory. <laughs> <laughs> so at home, all those bottles that I put inside my heart are shown in the okay. tasting area. So you don't forget them. I, yeah, exactly. And every time I see, I remember like, I have to see things to remember them. Okay. But the best bottle. Wow. Not necessarily Probably, the no, best bottle. No, just one something of, that reminds One bottle that I will never forget. Okay. Is a Pignolo ninety nine by the you know him the the founder of Pignolo um, uh, in uh, Abbazia di Rosazzo. Oh, uh, um, yeah. Who I've been trying uh, to get him on the podcast for years. He he is the father of Pignolo. We can say. Uh, yeah. Now my now you've sabotaged my memory too. <laughs> you know. You know. You have superpower in the exactly real universe. How you talk, exactly. It's exactly. not it, with it, R. Uh, um, Walter Filipputti. Walter Filipputti. Walter Filipputti. Thank God. Thank God we yeah. made it. <laughs> Were you there at La Subida? When I was there. With well, Walter Filipputti. Yeah, yeah, I was that night. Uh, you were there too? I was there too. Wow. Ah. Uh -huh, see that? <laughs> Another we, connection, we, guys. We run in the same circles. See. Si. Yeah. So It was um, amazing. The 99. Yes. I was able to steal a bottle. So, that, so that was, that's the wine that sticks with you. Yeah, it will stick. It will stick. Any, any thoughts of ever making Pignolo? You can't make Pignolo if you don't have a very good vineyard. Okay. And they can't afford to put a vineyard for 20 years and not harvesting. Ah, uh, you know? gotcha. And I can't harvest to make like a table red. Okay. Okay. That's, that's for me the, the difficult part of Pignolo. Like you need a lot of time both outside and both inside. I can spend 30 years to have a good Pignolo. <laughs> yeah, but you're young. You got lots of I know, of but it will be 55. You know. I'm 57. <laughs> <laughs> You're 57. I'm 57. Wow. Yeah. I thought you were going to be 58 this November. Yeah. Wow. I'm an old man. <laughs> anyway, uh, what was I going to say? So, last question. Yeah, what sure. is your sogno nel cassetto? Oh, my sogno nel cassetto. About, obviously, it's wine related. It could be. No, it doesn't it necessarily is, need to be wine related. No, it's. Can you imagine making half of my production only a Schiopettino? Can you imagine? Okay. Schiopettino per Botto and Schiopettino di Perpotto di Serva. Okay. But half of my production. And be known for, to, for it. Like to be known that I make a good Schiopettino. Mm. And I make a lot of it. Okay. Because that, that would be very nice. And also one thing that I, I think you felt by listening to the pod and everything. To be known, to be a good guy, a guy that you can talk to, a guy that can talk with you, can say things, can hear things. That okay. would be very nice. Okay. To be known for that. Yeah, to be known, to be a good guy. You are a good guy. I know, but I uh, want to continue on it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I yeah, want the people know that. <laughs> don't ever change. Oh, thank so. you. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway. Uh, <laughs> So in anything from the future, anything that you, were, you have in the, the thing that you can talk about? I mean, I know you have your plans <laughs> that you don't want to talk about, but anything, 
anything in the future that's coming up, something new, something that you're working on that you uh, want to... I'm working on, but uh, it's difficult. I want, because I have, my place is very nice. I have a beautiful terrace. Okay? Yeah, yes, I've been up there. You've it's been there, you know. Nice. Yeah. And I want to make, I still am looking for the name. So if you guys have a great name, please help me. I want to make like a terrazza, which means terrace, aperta, open. I want to make open terrace. Okay. I want to make like seven in the afternoon, DJ, wines. You come, which is not like a bar, but you can get your own taglio, which is your own glass. Okay. And enjoy the terrace, enjoy the nights, enjoy the sound. That's something that I want to do. Do it. I know. Do it. You should totally do it. I've, I've been wanting, I mean, I don't, obviously, I have a tiny little terrace on my apartment, but I've been saying to myself for the last couple of years after COVID that I oh. wanted to have like all weekend long, Wayne's apartment, open terrace. Okay. So Saturday night, Saturday afternoon, you know, just come, I'll have some food. Nice. Come over, bring a bottle. We sit on the terrace, we hang mm. out. And then, yeah, and it's just like, from like Friday night until Sunday early, early morning. So maybe I could do a open uh, terrace weekend open. Yeah, maybe it, you should totally do that. You should. Yeah. To I will come because also like I, I'm lucky enough. Like the um, the mom of the boyfriend of my sister, she's an amazing cook, and okay. she's from Naples, Naples. Oh, ah, so maybe I could also give something that she make. So, so you, know, you know, some appetizer, some food. When are you going to do this? <laughs> I have to. I know. You, you do it. Do it I now. have to go to talk like to see the paperwork of it. Yeah. Because it's always like. Is, is so, that something that you need like per messy to do? I have. Maybe to give out some food. Maybe I need. Maybe. Maybe I already have. Pretty sure. But I want to check on it. And it, as you guys understand. It all that, depends on who makes the food. Yeah. They have to have their certification. But maybe for, also if I can make something cold. Maybe I can make it Cold myself. you can do. Yeah. Cold I can do. Yeah. But like, but you know, just and also That's the music, like, how CI. does it work <laughs> to CIA. stay correct and not say anything? You bad. have to pay CIA. Yeah. <laughs> That's the biggest problem. Yeah. But anyway, cool. Listen, I don't want to keep you much longer. You've been a great guest, thank you, Mattia. You're, <laughs> you you are definitely like that nice guy who you want to be. You will continue <laughs> being that. So I, will. I, I look forward to spending time on your terrace. Thank you. Thank you for thank bringing you. some Schiopettino di Propolto to drink during the during the conversation. No, we had we still have to finish the bottle. Like oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I, I got I got a little bit of time. Yeah, my, maybe my we do an overtime podcast. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. We should. You know, we were talking before the podcast about like doing like a a, a podcast where we've already drunk yeah. a little bit too much. We should totally do. We that. should totally do. Yeah. But you should do when you're already one bottle after. Of course, no, you no, drink so you a bottle. Be, maybe yeah. true. You gotta Half go. You true. have to go into it like Same. super relaxed. And maybe four people. Four people, exactly. Four people, something like very I chill. Got, I got four microphones, four okay. sets of headphones, and I would like I see like a like either a room or a terrace with or a like terrace couches, <laughs> right? And you're so, just hanging out and like over drinking. You know a what would bit. be very nice? What making a video out of it? Exactly, I making thought a that video too. out of it. If you, I don't know. I mean, like I watch some, like a lot of comedians do podcasts. Yeah, I I hear a lot of podcasts about NBA. But I hear okay. a lot about podcasts, and and they it's basically like you see them sitting. I guess it's sort of like Joe Rogan is kind of like the archetype, <laughs> right? You're like in his basement, right? And you're hanging See, out, more or less. But you know, there's um there's a couple I can't remember their name, but um, Tom Segura and his wife I've Christina P. They have a great podcast, and they're about super what? funny. They're they're comedians. Oh, comedians! So they right. invite other comedians over, but they're like sitting around in their basement and they're having cocktails and goofing off and making fun of each other. And it's so much fun. I was like, I want to do that with wine. Yeah. I want to, I everybody have some, brings a bottle. Some guys we that just maybe drink. we can call. I have some, but you also have to. It's got, I think it's got to be like a rotating. Yeah, no, cast. it can be. If it's always the same no, guys and it gets boring. It get boring. Then you have to talk about other things. I'm wine. the only one who's going to be constant. Yeah, obviously. And then everybody else sort of cycles in. I think that'd be fun. You're we like the sun. It. <laughs> <I'm> like, things <laughs> running around you. <laughs> Listen, man, I know I'm big, but I'm not that massive. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> nah, it's fine. That's, I didn't take it the wrong way. <laughs> but uh, yeah, everything orbits around me. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice to see you. Thank you, Matias. It's really thank been a you. pleasure. Can't wait to hear myself. Oh, yeah. Well, you, well, you sound great. So. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs>
Have a good one. Ciao. Thank you.